everybody, this is Sam from Samuel Place Brass. Hope you're all well. I've got another product review coming up today. If you ever saw my review on the KGU Brass TET, it's an armature trainer. You can find the link up there if you haven't seen it. You'll notice in the video I said that that would be one of two KGU Brass reviews I would do. And indeed, guess what we have today? Another wooden box from KGU. You'll love to see it. If you pop open the lid, you'll notice there's something arguably even cooler than the TET inside. In the spotlight today is the KGU Trumpet Mouthpiece Booster. You'll notice they've been kind enough to send me the classic design in raw brass, but if this isn't your thing, you can go to their website, kgubrass.com, and find a whole variety of different finishes and designs, starting at 65 bucks, pretty affordable. And the merit of something like this over actually getting a heavyweight or megatone mouthpiece is some mouthpieces can be very hard to find a copy of. This here is a Bach Symphonic Series 1.5C, with a 24 throat and 24 back bore, I might not be able to find a Megatone variant of this, and not all box are created equal. So when I have a mouthpiece I really like, but I want to add more mass to it, rather than trying to find the same mouthpiece but heavier, I can instead opt to put a booster on it. So in essence, regardless of which model we're talking about, the KGU Brass Booster aims to simulate the feel of a heavyweight or Megatone mouthpiece. Depending on which model you get, the results may vary slightly, but in any case, these masses have been optimized so that they behave as you would expect with conventional mouthpieces and just make them feel as if you're playing a megatone. So at this stage, you're probably wondering first and foremost how the KGU will affect your sound on your instrument. So what we're going to do is run a couple of excerpts on a couple of different horns with and without the booster and compare accordingly. Make sure to wear headphones for the best sound results. So the KGU Brass Booster, it does not hugely alter the sound of your horn, but it adds a little bit of core, a little bit of body, and I think a little bit of strength to your sound. It's really good for playing first either in an orchestral or even a big band setting, even though a booster will typically dull the sound a little bit and shave off a couple of the highest overtones. I think it does a good job of correcting an overbright or shrill sound and just bringing the pitch 
kind of where it needs to sit a little bit. The slots are a little bit more forgiving when your mouthpiece is heavier. And honestly, even though a lot of people play on lightweight lead mouthpieces, I think regardless of the setting, the KGU Brass Booster can be a great addition for helping your accuracy and pitch centering. So let's talk about actually putting on a KGU Brass Booster. These mouthpieces, by the way, all fit with the booster, so I wanted to show that off as a demonstration. But we're just going to be using this Bach mouthpiece. I, please no. So before that rude interruption, I was about to say that the KGU Brass Booster comes in two pieces. You'll notice this is a sort of a barrel with screw threads on it, and it's got a side that's slightly narrower in diameter and a side that's slightly more open. It's a little bit conical and a little bit tapered to adjust for the taper of the mouthpiece walls here. What you're going to do is you're going to take this more open end on this side. You're going to screw it in, not all the way, just a fair amount so it stays. You're going to take the mouthpiece and you're going to have the booster facing what seems like the wrong way around, but it'll make sense in the end. And you're going to listen for a mechanical sort of clanking noise. And now you can unscrew the booster and face it the right way. And of course, Vicky's back again to annoy me more. And you're going to tighten. And if when you tighten, the booster does not slide off, that means that clank was successful. You put it together and it's going to be sturdy now. Of course, if you're using a booster and not just a straight up Megatone mouthpiece, chances are you'll want to take this off at some point. And the way you do that is sort of the reverse of what we did to put it on. So we're going to unscrew that booster. It's easiest to just grip the mouthpiece rim and twist that. And once again, we're going to face it what feels like the wrong way around. And that's to give us a little bit of leverage. We're gonna screw it again, kind of halfway, and just wiggle it a little bit. Uh, and, and bump your camera stand, of course, that's a very important step. But as you wiggle it a little bit, it'll loosen and eventually pop right off. Let's also demonstrate what happens if you don't put the booster on firmly enough. If you just kind of slide it on until it fits, and then you attempt to screw the booster on as normal, what you'll notice is it will tighten just fine up until the very last twist. And then you'll twist one more time to try and tighten it and it will slide right off. And that means the screw threaded piece was not far enough on this taper to be able to fit. It's a little bit of a sort of a friction uh, tapered fit. So it can be annoying and it can feel a little bit scary to hear that first clank. But if you really hear it, that means it's really on there as firmly as it should be. And you will be able to take it off in most cases. Let's also say you've done the opposite. Instead, you've put the screw threaded piece on way too tight and you just cannot get it off. Don't fret, don't panic. There is always a way out of this. So let's say you put the booster on, again, wrong way around, just a little bit like that. And you just need a little bit more force to get it off. What you can do is you can take a small felt or rubber headed mallet and just give it slight taps, just glancing blows in the direction which you're trying to take it off. And I would recommend doing it over carpet and also not doing it that long so that it falls off, just enough so that you can wiggle it off with your fingers eventually. Again, please remember that even the smallest or softest mallet can cause lasting harm to your brass equipment if used improperly. The best way to do this is a couple of very light taps and then trying to wiggle it off and then repeat until it comes off naturally. Don't beat it with the mallet until the booster goes flying off. Let's briefly look at some shank insertion lengths. If you use a Yamaha, it'll probably go right up to the edge. If you use a Bach, like my sea trumpet, it might leave a little bit of open space because Bachs don't let the mouthpiece go in as far. And lastly, my Berkeley Winds trumpet. Yeah, no go, doesn't fit. So the moral of the story is don't buy from Berkeley Winds. But in any case, if you use something conventional like a Yamaha or a Bach lead pipe, you should be good to go. So with all that finally said and done, that was my review on the KGU Brass Trumpet Mouthpiece Booster. Make sure to visit kgubrass.com below if you want to check out any sort of variance in size or design or finish on these boosters. They're really well worth looking into, especially if you plan to play in an orchestra, a jazz combo, any sort of chamber setting, really anything, honestly. If you're looking for a little bit more confidence in your slotting and looking for a little bit more warmth in your sound, this is a really good option without shelling out for a whole new mouthpiece. So. Thanks for watching. It's been a real joy to work with KGU on these product reviews, and I hope to work with them again soon in the future. Until next time, consider subscribing if you made it this far into the video. It really helps out a lot. If you want more product reviews, they'll be up in the card there for you to check out. And until next time, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the flip side.